can make me whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as But the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Father, we're so thankful for the blood of Jesus. And we just cover ourselves afresh and anew with that precious blood. Father, we thank you and praise you for that. Just uh, guide and direct our our singing tonight, Lord, and our worship to you, Lord, may it be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Praise God. We're going to do a little minor stuff tonight. Don't always do stuff like this, kind of a, eh, Jewish type songs, but uh, they're good. Praise God. All right, we shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before them. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands as we go out with joy. We shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth. Before them there'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands as we go out with joy. We shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth. Before them there'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands as we go out with joy. And 
as we go out with joy, as we go out with joy. And then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old men together. La 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 I will turn their mourning into joy and I will comfort them and make them rejoice 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 from their sorrow and make them rejoice Rejoice, rejoice from their sorrow. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old men together. La 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 I will turn their mourning into joy. And I will comfort them and make them rejoice, rejoice, rejoice from their sorrow and make them rejoice, rejoice, rejoice from their sorrow. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old men together. La 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 I will turn their mourning into joy and I will comfort them and make them rejoice 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 from their sorrow and make them rejoice 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 from their sorrow and make them rejoice 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 from their sorrow and make them rejoice 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 from their sorrow for the zeal of God has consumed me it burns within my soul a mighty force that cannot be stopped a fire that cannot be quenched oh hallelujah 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 oh, hallelujah hallelujah the zeal of God has consumed me. It burns within my soul. A mighty force that cannot be stopped. A fire which cannot be quenched. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh hallelujah, 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 oh hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Here's one we haven't sang in a long time, The Trumpet of Zion. Here's a song that Pastor got clear back in 2000. For the trumpet is about to sound, great rejoicing throughout the world is found. As great revival sweeps throughout the land, it shall not be dependent on any man. Miracles, signs, 
lights and wonders there shall be Singing and dancing unto thee For the trumpet is about to blow And every true saint seems to know Oh, what a great day it shall be For it's not dependent on you or me As we look deep into his face We'll see revival in this place Miracles, signs, and wonders shall all see For nothing shall stop you and me Miracles, signs, and wonders shall all see For nothing shall stop you and me For that trumpet is about to sound Great rejoicing throughout the world is found As great revival sweeps throughout the land It shall standing on any man miracles signs and wonders shall there be and singing and dancing unto thee for that trumpet is about to blow and every true saint seems to know it shall be for it's not dependent on you or me as we look deep into his face we'll see revival in this place miracles signs and wonders shall all see for nothing shall stop you and me miracles signs and wonders shall all see for nothing shall stop you and me miracles Miracles, signs, and wonders shall all see, for nothing shall stop you and me. Miracles, signs, and wonders shall all see, for nothing shall stop you and me. For that trumpet is about to sound, great rejoicing throughout the world is found. As great revival sweeps throughout the land, it shall not be dependent on any man. Miracle signs and wonders shall there be, singing and dancing unto thee. For that trumpet is about to blow, and every true saint seems to know. Oh, what a great day it will be, for it's not dependent on you or me. As we look deep into his face, we'll see revival in this place. Miracles, signs, and wonders shall all see, and nothing shall stop you and me. Miracles, signs, and wonders shall all see, for nothing shall stop you and me. Miracles, miracles, signs, and wonders shall all see, for nothing shall stop you and me. Miracles, signs, and wonders shall all see, for nothing shall stop you and me. No, nothing, for nothing shall stop you and me. Nothing, nothing shall stop you and me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. Glory. Nothing, Lord, nothing shall stop, Lord, your mighty, mighty move. Hallelujah. For as that day breaks forth, saith your Father, it shall be far greater than anything that you've ever seen, of anything that you've ever heard. There is no story other than the story of salvation that could even come close to what you shall see when all, all has come to the full conclusion of what I, your Father, has called it to be. For it shall be so great that man will not be able to do their own agendas. 
they will not be able to do the things that they think that they can do because they think they have so much time left. There shall be great disaster, not only on the East Coast, but on the West Coast. And in the middle, when the two ridge rivers become one, when there is fire that can be seen, not only during the night, but during the day, the clouds that shall cover the earth, the rumbling of the sea, and the tidal waves, the tidal waves that shall hit the west coast shall be far greater than man has said. And then the tabernacles, then the churches, they shall be filled to overflowing. And they shall look, they shall look for that place, that place that I've set aside, that place that I call the Father's house, where they can come and receive the truth, where they can come and receive their orders, where they can come and be all that I said that they could be. So fear not what the enemy says. Fear not what is ahead. For I have said unto you, I shall take you through this time. Glory. For there are areas that I have clearly spoken to my church about. I have warned them to flee these areas, and yet they make their own plans. They desire to go where they desire to go. Oh, the disaster. The disaster. Because they listen not. Because they hear not that they understand not, that they do not do as I have told them. But if they would do all that I have told them to do, they would be the overcomers, they would be the victors, they would be the champions. They'd be far greater, far greater than any Samson. They'd be far greater than any David. They'd be far greater than any Elijah or Elisha. They'd be far greater and there'd be more miracles. Souls would flood into the church. Yes, the time would be very short, but the revival would be very great, very great. And my work shall be completed, even though man is not looking for it, and those that aren't looking shall be left behind. Oh, I say unto you, hear, hear, hear what the Spirit of God has to say to the church. God. Either stand or remain seating while we worship the Lord in some worship songs. Praise God. Who in the heavens is like you? Who on this earth can compare with who you are? I've searched the mountains. I've searched the sea, I've searched as far as my mind can conceive, and still I found there's no one like you.
compare with who you are. I've searched the mountains, I've searched the seas, I've searched as far as my mind can conceive, still I found there's no one like you. There is no one like you. Lord, you are my everything. There is no one like you. There's no one like you, there is no one like you, Lord, you are my everything, there is no one like you. with who you are. I've searched the mountains, I've searched the seas, I've searched as far as my mind can conceive, and still i found there's no Like you, Lord, you are, Lord, you are my everything. There is no one like you. Oh, yes, there is no one like you. There is no one like you. Jehovah, thou 
God. It's been a good good worship tonight. I appreciate all of you just entering right in. I know some of those songs we haven't sang in a while. Some of them are we brought out of the archives. Praise God. But they're good too. Amen. I hope you enjoyed it tonight. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to just receive our evening offering tonight and uh, bless the Lord in our giving. So we thank the Lord for that. Father, you're so good. We just want to give you praise, honor, and glory. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts, the giving, Lord, of your people. Just continue to bless them in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God, we reminded you this morning about youth camp. Please uh, take care of those registrations this week. And uh, we'll be careful to uh, take care of all of that. Praise God.
Dirt softball tomorrow night, 7.15 at Dexter Park. And uh, fellowship dinner next Sunday. Praise God. Lots of good things. I think we got a couple of children singing tonight. I don't know. Anybody here have a, a testimony they want to uh, share for the goodness of God? Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I was thinking tonight, uh, I do want to thank the Lord. I've been back to work now uh, three weeks, two weeks, three weeks. weeks. Seems like longer. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank the Lord for <coughs> his strength. <clears throat> As you know, I was out of work for four weeks, and uh, getting back to work was kind of tough. I have to... And uh, I just uh, want to thank the Lord for strengthening me and helping me uh, get through each night. Praise God. I just praise him. He's good. And, uh, you know, when we're, when we're healthy and well, we just don't always think about how good it is to be healthy. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> And when we're down, then we realize, oh, Lord, I'm so happy to be back to work. And uh, sometimes we can complain about work, but, you know, it's a good thing to work. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. There's good things that Solomon says about work under all of our labor under the sun. Amen? Praise God. And I thank the Lord that uh, he has helped us. And, uh, you know, I love giving, and uh, the weeks that I was off from work, I didn't have as much to give, of course. And uh, I don't know, I, I like having more to give, amen? I like being able to give to the Lord, because uh, we know that's how God operates. That's how the gospel keeps going forth. And I just want to thank him and praise him for that. He is so good. Praise God. Well, we have two anxious young ones tonight that are going to sing. Zane and Hannah, right? Praise God. Do you both need a mic, do you, tonight? You, don't, you do or don't? Oh, you do. All right.
Hallelujah. How many believe that? Like you can say, of course, as you can see, Zane doesn't hardly need a microphone, does he? <laughs> no, he's going to have a good voice like his dad. Glory. That's a plus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Throw that air back on, would you please? Glory. How many want the air? Good. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to listen extremely careful tonight. It seems like sometimes we get our most powerful messages when we have a small crowd. Not that they can't go to it now and listen to it, but it seems that way. From what God has showed me, I believe this is probably one of the most important sermons that you ever heard. And if you listen careful, the results are going to be the greatest that you've ever had. Bar none. Bar none. Glory. And God gave me the title for it. Listen careful now. Crossing Jordan tonight. Crossing Jordan tonight. Tonight. Glory. Hallelujah. Everybody has a Jordan to cross. It is something that stands between you in the inheritance God has promised you. The children of Israel made it across, and so can we. Joshua 3, 1 through 7. Story is very clear there. Now, my, <laughs> Moses had died, and Joshua is in charge. They are at a critical point. They have been there before. They've been there before. Glory. This is where you either break down or you break through. There's no other place to go. One of the two. This is where you decide if the dream is worth it or you're going to give it up. Glory. This is where you, you move into the dream. You know, it's one thing to have a dream. It's another thing to take possession of that dream. If you never take possession of the dream, you never have it. Glory. Every dreamer will come to this place. It is here that the dreamer either goes over or under. This is just like the Lord gave it to me now. Nothing's been added to it. The place is called Jordan. Jordan, the descender. Jordan, death. Jordan, the end. That's what Jordan means. Glory. <laughs> An entire generation had died at this very place spiritually. As if for them. There never was another chance for them. They all died never entering the promised land. Wow. I don't know. What do you think? Every dreamer will come to this place. And there are only two choices. Cross over into the promise or settle down on this side of Jordan and give up your dream. That's it. That's it. I told you this was an important message. Jordan is a place that is God ordained. It is a place of impossibility. It is a place of weakness, helplessness. It is a place where all self-effort dies. It is where we come face to face with our own carnal nature. Glory. Think about that. You may face your Jordan during a time of sickness or a time of great 
financial difficulties or a time of family turmoil or even when walking in victory. You're going to have to come to your Jordan. God is not the author of sickness and disease and poverty and hardship. But as we face these things, we come to an end of ourselves. The flesh dies and the spirit comes alive. Glory. So Jordan is a dividing line. It's the place where we are faced to decide. We are going to trust in the living God. Or are we going to trust in the arm of flesh. And self efforts. And die. Jordan. I would say tonight. Our Jordan is this front row. Seriously. It's not the front row. Glory. That's just the banks of the water. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jacob wrestled all night with the angel of the Lord. During that wrestling match, Jacob came face to face with his carnal self. He was forced to face himself. He saw himself as he was. A deceiver. A serper. A planner. Uh, a manipulator. He manipulated things. He was a, a serper. He usurped authority. He done everything. But he had to come to a place where things changed. Glory. Jacob cried out to be delivered from the power of self-life. I won't go into all that. To t you know, I won't go into all that. He said, <laughs> I've got to change, Lord. Don't leave me like this. I can't live like this anymore. I'm sick of my carnal self. And the angel smote him in the thigh and the sinew or muscle of his self-life died. It was gone. It was gone forever. What was a Jordan for Jacob? What does it take to get across Jordan? You know, that should be our question. One, sanctification. Sanctifying ourselves for tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. I believe this is for you tonight. Now listen. Anything that would offend the Spirit of God in our lives can keep us from crossing Jordan. Anything. You know, either we believe the Bible or we don't believe the Bible. There's no second choice. So many have stared across Jordan, but because of some strange, ordinate affection, some hidden sin, some secret self-love, they come up short and were swallowed up by the waves of despair, guilt, and condemnation. Glory. Circumcise the children of Israel again. That's what God said. Circumcise. We realize that circumcision for us is of the heart. It's of the heart. Our hearts need to be circumcised. The application for us is that we must circumcise ourselves as often as we need it. As often as we need it. We must never reach the place of believing that we have once for all conquered the self-life. But ever be watchful and quick to take the sharp edge of the word of God and cut away that which is of flesh. That's the only way we get rid of it. We've got to do it ourselves. Sanctify yourself for tomorrow... Listen, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. I believe that. 
I believe that. I believe things so great and wonderful are going to take place for those that are willing to really cross Jordan. Glory. How much of God's power do we forfeit when we allow our lives to become cluttered with things of the flesh? It is clear that the shortage and the failure is not on God's part. He is ready. He is willing. He is able. But we must clear the way. Open up the channel. Sanctify ourselves. You know when married couples are having a problem? Brother Dave used to teach that it's the greatest illustration of our lives. He would take a wastebasket filled to the very brim with whatever he could put in it. And he would turn it and he said, never mind what the outside look, but tell me, what color is the bottom? There's no way they could tell. They could start guessing. And then he'd dump it out on the floor. He'd say, what color is it? And they'd say, whatever color it was. And he said, I want to show you what happens to your love life. Even to your love life to God. And as he counseled them, he'd put a paper at a time back into the wastebasket. And then again, he would ask them, what color is the bottom? Don't tell me by remembrance, what color are you seeing? And then he would tell them, if you take all this garbage out, you'll find your love is still there. It's never gone. It's like they said in the, in the wedding, you know, in the vows that they wrote. As long as you, gotta rem uh, you can remember, the love is still there. It never goes anywhere. It was forever. It was forever. We just put so much junk on top of it. We can't see it. Now if we take it off, it'll still be there. It hasn't gone anywhere. We must have a vision of something greater. That's point two. No one will let go of what they have unless they have caught a vision of something greater, something more important. Glory. This is what happens when husbands and wives break apart. They're blinded by the devil and they think they've found something better. They think the grass is greener on the other side only to find out it's still grass. Glory. That's a lie of the devil. And that's the same lie he tells us. If we really want to cross the Jordan, if we really want to move into the presence of God, if we really want everything we've been dreaming and believing, then we've got to cross the Jordan. Glory. Moses had a vision of something greater. What was his vision of? Heaven. Glory. Joshua had a vision of something greater. What was his vision? The promised land. Joseph had a vision of something greater. What was his? He saved all of Israel, all of the world. Glory. Jesus had a vision of something greater. What was that? That you and I might become as he was. That nothing could stop us. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Wow. What's your vision? What's your goal? Glory. Point three. Total dependence upon God. I believe with all my heart, it's time that our total dependence is upon God. We've got to have, we gotta have total dependence upon God. This is where we are holding onto the ark. 
The ark equals the presence, the power, the glory of God. We know that we can't cross in our own power. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You remember the Jordan River? It was at flood season. Matter of fact, it's a powerful story. Because God didn't divide it. Like the Red Sea, he caused it to stand still. And I can see that wall of jelly just shaking. It's right there. They can see it with this eye. It's right there. It's going to take a man to cross it. Glory. Point four. Bare feet. Bare feet. Bare feet means no personal agenda. Every dream must have at its core the glory of God. The promotion of the kingdom. It won't work. If it's self Glory. In nature, it's not from God. And you'll drown in the Jordan. You'll drown in it. Glory. Before God commissioned Moses to bring his people out of bondage, he first ordered him to take his shoes off. And here we see it again. When Joshua came into the presence of the captain of the Lord's host, he took his shoes off. Remember when God told us a long time to take ours off? I still do. He said we could put them back on. Glory. Hallelujah. Point five is wet feet. Wet feet. It wasn't until the priest's feet were dipped into the water that the water began to recede. Nothing happened until they stepped in and got their feet wet. I believe that's the same tonight. Nothing will happen unless you get your feet wet. And we're not going to put water up here. <laughs> Glory. They had to have enough vision of the promise and enough faith in God to get them off the banks into the water. You remember Peter? He walked on the water. He walked on the water. Then... As they walked on the water, the water fled before them. One of the biggest problems is we must, we must see victory before we ever get into the fight. We want to see the end before it ever starts. And that never happens because that's not faith. We can see it spiritually. But we can't see it with our eyes or we wouldn't be walking in faith. The problem is God operates on a need to know basis. He only gives you what you need to know. Enough to get you started. How many has already learned that? I mean since you got saved. Did God tell you everything you were ever going to do? Uh-uh. And boy were we shocked when he told us some things. Glory. Point six. Trusting God's timing. Waiting on God. Joshua 3, 4. Yet there shall be a space between you and it. About 2,000 cupids by measure. Don't come near to it. That you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way before. How many times has God told us that? Over and over. This is one of the greatest tests of all. That's 2,000 cubits. And I'll tell you, that feels like 100 years at times. God's tri timing is critical. God's timing, God's timing now has to be full measure before God's power can work. In God's timing, things and people are perfectly positioned. This is why there had to be that space. They had to be perfectly positioned.
positioned. God's timing usually doesn't make sense from a natural perspective. I've heard so many people tell me that over the years. I can't find that in the Bible. Well, dig a little deeper. You'll be shocked. It's there. It's there. The devil's blinded your eyes and you don't see it. Glory. I'll tell you, it don't make sense, I know. You know, if you think about it, who would ever try to cross the Jordan River at flood stage? They did it every year at this season. Every year at this time. It wasn't a surprise. They knew it. But they didn't think God was going to tell them to cross it either. They're like us. They thought at the last minute God would say, Okay, you know, I accept your sacrifice. He doesn't want a sacrifice. He wants us. He wants us. Remember this, Jericho is on the other side. Jericho is ripe for conquest. That's the world, spiritually. And right now it's ready for conquest. Joshua 2, 9 through 11. Listen, this, this is the harlot. This is the prostitute. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land. They hadn't even done any fighting yet. And that your terror is fallen upon us. In other words, they were very fearful. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Glory. That's verse 9. That's happening right now. The devil's fighting us harder than at any time. Every one of us is going through, through battles like never before. He's afraid. He knows we're breaking through. He knows we're going to conquer. He knows we're going to win. He knows this is going to be victorious. If we'll only cross. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan. The other side, really. Jordan. Shihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we have heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. That's powerful, isn't it? That's powerful. God knows when things are in position. And I believe tonight they're in position. Glory. Hallelujah. To, de to delay and allow Jericho to regain their courage would be foolishness. It may not look like the time or feel like the time or sound like the time, but God knows what we don't know. He has inside information. So when he says do it, you can be sure his power will be available to bring it to pass. All right. If you are willing and obedient, he says, you will eat the good of the land. We will cross the Jordan. You believe that? Come cross your Jordan now then. You know, come cross your Jordan tonight, right now. Right now. Come cross it and see what God will do. Praise God. The altar is open.